Hello my soccer universe. I know it's a little bit late but I really could not find the time yesterday to record a video and then uh, when I had the time I decided now nah, it's already so late let's wait for CONCACAF results as well and then this morning also. So I'm getting now to it. I actually had a brief thought of waiting for the release of the um, FIFA uh, final rating because then we al already know the pots although I have a pretty good idea how the pots will uh, look like which I will let you know as well. But I will do a separate video for the World Cup draw with my first World Cup, proper World Cup prediction um, in the afternoon slash evening. And then, of course, there will be draw reaction uh, as well. So loads of stuff coming uh, your way for World Cup Cup qualifying to make up for the one day that I missed. But, you know, sometimes it's just not possible. Boy, those last, especially the Tuesday. Yesterday, I think there was much less drama, um, but the Tuesday, all the drama and all the chaos that you expect in World Cup qualifying, I mean, it was the good phase, it was the ugly phase, it was all there. You just had to watch it. And yes, I watched it and I watched uh, way too much of it to, uh, to the extent another reason why I didn't make a video yesterday. I was just uh, exhausted from the whole thing uh, and had, had low, lost, lost to, I was, I would have not made a very coherent video. So yeah, uh, behind me and wearing are uh, all the teams that I have in my collection that have now qualified uh, over this uh, window with the addition of Ukraine, but of, they are for obvious reasons there and they may yet still qualify. I am wearing Cameron because um, I have a caveat to it, but I think this is one that made me quite happy. And I almost was wearing these guys. They're not qualified yet, but I want to show them. Peru is at least still in the running and actually has a decent shot of making it uh, to Qatar, which uh, will make in a way up for me a little bit for the loss of Italy in many, many, many ways. But you know, Italy is a whole other story that I have covered enough, so we don't need to talk, 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 talk about them uh, again. I will say we go straight in a little bit. Uh, I want to keep going region by region, but also a little bit chronologically. So uh, we got to start in Asia, where the last big thing was who will get the other playoff spot uh, to face Australia. And the UAE got the win against South Korea in the 54th minute. Um, didn't see much of it, but I had some my... Uh, I had a little worries for the UAE. Now, uh, whether the UAE should or could qualify is a whole different story given the tension with Qatar. But on the other, other side, this is the Arab World Cup. So, I mean, having some Arab nations there would definitely not hurt. But we have uh, quite a few, I think, or uh, if you count North Africa as Arab, which it technically it is, uh, we have some there. So, I think there will be plenty of support. Uh, for these nations as well, but you know, uh, that region is so complicated of who can be for whom that, um, yeah, I don't want to get into that right at this moment, I gotta say as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, the UAE made it and that loss of Korea paired with a, a contentious win for a reason that I will mention in a sec, which showed the ugly face of Iran over Lebanon and Lebanon was one of the teams that technically could have done something but really didn't. Uh, meant that Iran actually wins the group ahead of Korea. Now, why was it contentious? Well, uh, it was said that there will be tickets sold for women, uh, which to me is such an unfathomable thing. But I know, I know it's a very religious state. Iran at least has has a very religious lead leadership, and they didn't let the women in. They even used tear gas. And at this moment, it's not even clear whether Iran. Uh, at least they are afraid that they might get expelled from the World Cup because that was a FIFA condition. Let women into the stadium. And this is such a boneheaded thing to not let women into it. Uh, I cannot uh, tell you where to... to I, I, cannot, I don't know where to begin with telling this. I mean, I can tell you that when I read this yesterday, I went down. Uh, my daughters were both making home homework and uh, with my wife. I went down to, to them and said, I am so happy that we are living in a civilized country. Because it is just cannot be. This just can, cannot be. And yeah, I bought an Iran jersey with knowing. I wanted to have for every team at the World Cup, I wanted to have a have jersey. I bought an Iran jersey knowing that there's this trouble. And I know that 
with some of the teams that I have to get, including Iran, I have some qualms and whatever. But I said, no, this is Sporting Valley only and I want to have that. So be fine with, with that. But whenever I look at this Iran jersey uh, that I have, I always have that in mind, you know. I would. I think there's many good things in Iran. It's a historically important region. Blah 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 blah. But the current regime there is something I cannot uh, endorse. However, I'm always reminded of the scenes when the Iran faced USA in '98. Um, what a that a different side was shown. And fun fact, and, and I actually almost got tickets up until the quarterfinal for the Iran games in Germany 2006. But it would have been only me there inviting to take the taken, but I would have guaranteed up, up until the quarterfinal to watch it, which I think would have ended up me, be, me following Portugal, which probably would not have been that bad. Uh, but yeah, um, I didn't go it for A, it would have been alone, and B, I was not sure if. I should go for the Iran thing overall, but yeah, so be it. Uh, let's see. I don't think they will uh, expel them, but because FIFA relish, they have been staunch on this issue, but I'm not sure if they will have the guts to expel Iran. And then, yeah, I, I guess the UAE will qualify and Iraq will play a playoff against Australia. That's at least how I would see that going. Moving on from Asia. Um, Nah, not moving on. The other group uh, had uh, just two little things. Japan against Vietnam ended in a 1-1, um, which very similar statistics to what Italy had against uh, North Macedonia. So it can happen. The problem is that Japan did the job before, which Italy did, they did not. So I wanted to make that point. And then Saudi Arabia beat Australia. Uh, so any hope that Australia ever would have had uh, of finishing maybe in a second spot. No, it's Australia is not good at this moment, which hurts me because I am pro 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 person. This is my probably my favorite uh, team in the now Asian region. I love Australia in many ways. Uh, but I'm gonna um, uh, mentally, I don't think Australia will make it to this World Cup. I'm not even sure if they will uh, win against the UAE, although they're 62% fav fav uh, favorite. Um, but the game is played in Doha. Well, yeah, uh, partisan support. Okay, let's leave the Asian region. I I I I don't want to get in too much trouble. Uh, the European playoffs uh, finals were actually a side thought. For me, the Tuesday evening was all about the African qualif qualifiers because I knew that uh, both Euro Euro European games, I roughly had, had an idea of well, how, how it was going. If Portugal was going to beat North Macedonia, I really thought uh, was a foregone conclusion uh, because, you know, uh, you, lightning doesn't, uh, hit stri uh, doesn't strike twice in many ways. North Macedonia did have a hard game against um, Italy. Portugal got frustrated. I think uh, at the beginning, North Macedonia showed more against Portugal than they ever did against Italy. Uh, also has, has, has to be said, but Portugal started to get, fru started to get frustrated uh, because I think Cristiano missing chance and so on. They did get frustrated like it, 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 Italy. The one luck for them was that Macedonia was a teeny bit more proactive. I mean, having a Elif Elmas, I think, uh, helps. And then that Cristiano actually was for once not selfish. Self it was a counter-attack, which tells you that um, North Macedon was not just heading back. Um, where he could have taken it himself, but he passed it through the legs of the fan to Bruno Fernandes, who makes it 1-0. If that goal is not scored before the half, I think Portugal uh, will have a tough time breaking down North Macedonia. Because they would have gotten only more and more defensive. But so... It opened up and then with another brilliant uh, assist from Diego, Diogo Jota, Bruno Fernandes makes it 2-0 and Portugal is at, at the World Cup and I've say, I say it again, justice. That's the only word that comes to me is justice because Portugal have been robbed in Serbia. I, don't get me wrong, I was really happy when Serbia beat Portugal and qual 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 qualified. There was a certain uh, glee to it. Hindsight, I probably should not have done that because, you know, Italy. But there was a certain glee uh, that because, you know, it was an important game. And I know that Port Port Portugal is one of those most mismanaged teams in world football where the coach does not fit the team uh, in many ways. Uh, but Portugal should, that, that goal in Serbia should have counted. Ronaldo's 3-2. Uh, and if that counts, Portugal is at that World Cup. 
So for me, this was just this, um, and now having North Macedonia there, although it would have been a great story, um, footballing wise, I'd rather see Portugal there. Heck, I'd rather see Italy there. Because footballing wise, Italy would be is definitely more entertaining than Portugal. Portugal though has more talent, especially on the financial uh, Fernando Santos. Uh, I, and you see, if they get if they for some some reason they decide on a different coach now, I actually, I actually think that this this, this poor Portugal side can deliver the fireworks. Uh, we just haven't seen a really really great and firing Portugal side. I want to say it since two thousand, when since ever they got good. <laughs> they were actually more defensive. I think the really the most entertaining Portugal side that I, I ever seen was probably uh, in 2000, potentially 9996. Nine, nine but you know, um, it's the price you have to pay. Um, the other one, Sweden, I think in the first half was the more pro proactive and better team. However, they played a long overtime, whereas Poland could basically uh, just watch who will come, and they kind of had the feeling that it will be any 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 way to be the Swedes. It was the game was not played in Warsaw, but in uh, Kosov in the uh, Slavsky Stadium, so uh, Salisha Stadium, which was uh, I didn't know know that, but for a long time this this was the national ground for Poland up until the national stadium in Warsaw was built. So they have now completely refurbished these athletics tracks in, in there. So I'm not sure if it's the greatest um, stadium, but that region, I mean, it's not a single city, but that region is actually the most populous region in Poland uh, period. And, and anyway, so I think they got maybe the right thing. Um, it was, again, not not the greatest games, but I think Sweden had some really good chances early on to take a lead. Uh, Jersey matchup I also want to mention because a, I found it weird that Sweden plays in all yellow against Poland. You could very well play in your beautiful away jerseys. Maybe they didn't want to do it. And the other thing is um, on one side, positive that Lewandowski was wearing a Ukrainian armband for the captaincy. However, uh, the Ukrainian colors are exactly the Swedish colors, so it seemed a little bit odd in that sense, but uh, I, told, I totally understand and, and support him there. Um, the game turned on a, a penalty decision that was a stonewall penalty, and Lewandowski is typically uh, uh, way step steps up, makes it 1-0. Um, Sweden then have to open up, get, get a little bit more, and then Zielinski uh, catch, catch, catches out the defense and makes it 2-0, and Poland qualify um, as I said, I saw that coming from a mile away, because uh, if you don't have to play Russia, it was it was a done deal. You would get a home game and, and you have a game less, uh, a hard game, and then in, uh, less to prepare. Uh, I think it was always gonna be po uh, in favor of Poland uh, going to the World Cup. So yeah, uh, Zlatan is not there at the World Cup. Like Italy, he played his last um, knockout game at the World Cup in 2006. But on the other side, um, Poland, we have eleven Lewandowski there. Though Poland is one of those teams that will that always disappoint at, on the World Cup stage. Uh, also gotta be said. Moving on to where really the action was in Africa. I mean, the first legs... Forget about them. As I said, this was all fumbles, uh, failures, and whatever. But the second legs, I mean, delivered uh, all three games. I, I would say three games fully delivered. One was filled with goals, and the other one, uh, yeah, was maybe two. Forget and probably not the world was not watching too much in, in, anyway. But every other game had storylines left and right. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It was all there. Maybe this will be the title for for the video. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It was all there. If you like drama and you didn't watch the African qualifiers, which was really, really hard, especially if you're in Europe, because Africa did not change the, the time, which kind of makes sense to, to us. I hate this time change. So uh, the games were even later than usual for us Europeans and uh, paired there with the time change and having to get, get a bill, you can, I was knackered. Uh, I would say we go a little bit game by game. Nigeria against Ghana, the first real upset. Um, it was a game uh, played in Abuja, full stay stadium. Again, organization there will come. Come, that it was absolute chaos. Um, where Ghana takes the early lead through a party shot that never should have made it to goal. How, whatever the goalkeeper did there, the ball goes through him, and Ghana suddenly have the upper uh, hand because away goals count. At that point, I still thought this is early enough that Nigeria can turn around, and sure enough, they get a penalty of of VAR. Um, that Rostekong makes it 1-1. One, one. 
Um, and I thought that especially with Victor Ozimen up front, they really look dangerous all the time. And then he scores the second goal, but it's disallowed for a clear offside. And that in a way took the momentum out of Nigeria. Then Ghana made some really smart decisions. Stay tight. It was very well coached. This was a completely different Ghana team to the one that had so, 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 It was not exciting. But they just said, let's hold back and let Nigeria beat us. Let's try come come come, come at us. And Nigeria didn't. There was a second half, you ha never had the feeling. I mean, there was maybe one uh, bicycle kickish uh, volley from Osiman that went wide. That was the one chance that I, re I remember from, from the game. And Ghana pulled the upset. I never, I never saw Ghana qualifying from this one. I know Nigeria is not a team to be trust, but this is, Nigeria is such a superior, superior team in Tata time to Ghana at the moment. I was absolutely stunned about this result. Really, 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 really. So um, it was also, I think, the better jersey matchup uh, than the, the, the previous one. Afterwards, uh, all hell broke, broke loose. Nigerian fans could not take it. Uh, many people went onto the pitch. There was a pitch invasion. I think even FIFA doctor died from a heart attack, which was not necessarily related to those pitch invasions. But yeah, uh, these were really, really, really ugly scenes uh, there in Abuja. So yeah, um, a first upset. The second one, uh, Senegal against Egypt. I mean... Um, New stadium in Dakar. The crowd absolutely uh, buzzing for this game. However, and I know same thing happened in Egypt as well. Um, and I had to just uh, to verify it that because it really turned me off for almost the entire game. I said, no, before I make a judgment now, I really need to check this. The way that the, uh, the Egyptian anthem was whistled out, you could not hear a sound on TV. And I hate that. But I was sure that this happened proper, proper, proper too. Seemingly, whatever happened in Egypt, and I heard or, or already whatever the Senegalese crowd did to the Egyptians, uh, keyword lays, little lay, pointers, is kind of seen with some contempt in Africa, because um, yeah, it happens in North Africa all the time. So I, I, I get it. Still, it was overbearing and too much. And I'm not even thinking about the lay. I mean, it seemed like there were um, globe bugs all over the States. I mean, it was every time there was uh, the Egyptian goalkeeper, uh, any, especially Mohamed Salah, he got covered, 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 covered in lasers. It was just as, uh, uh, a speckling to behold. The one thing where I really draw the line is when the Egyptian goalkeeper once went down and you saw the many water bottles there and one hit him. This is where... And uh, seems that the delegation got also hit later on the bus guard. I think this is where things got a little bit too much. I don't know what the laser pointer does. Seems seemingly it didn't deter uh, them too much, but uh, that was a step too far. The game itself, it was always. I mean, uh, Senegal scored like Egypt very very early on, and at that point, I thought Senegal is going to take that game two to the Egyptians and going to win it outright. It never came. They had a few chances uh, in, in, in the first half, but the second half, it, Egypt did all the dark arts to slow the game down and it went to overtime. In overtime, Saar needs to make it 2 nil. Uh, absolute uh, cannot miss chance there. Uh, Senegal in the first half of overtime was the better team and should have killed Kildia. Yeah, they didn't. The second half of overtime was some of the most tedious soccer I've seen in a long time. I mean, the way that the Egyptians were lying on the floor and just making for the penalty and the referee only then giving four additional minutes. I mean, he, you, he could have played 10 more and would have had to extend this. I mean, we could have played this for another hour to make up all the missed time that was hap happening there. But to penalties it went and what a sure sh sh this was. The first four, including Mohamed Salah, all missing. But Senegal shot first and... So it was really Koulibaly misses. So Salah needs to make it to get the momentum. He misses. Then Sis has Sis, his effort saved. Zizo does not save it either. At that moment, I kind of had the feeling, yeah, with those two misses for Egypt, where you can take the lead, the momentum goes squarely onto Senegal. Because you had twice the, the chance to take uh, the lead. 
Sar converts his El Solalia with the, probably the best penalty, makes it 1-1-1, one, 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 apart from them, uh, Dieng, uh, Mustafa Mohamed misses, and Sadio Mane sends Senegal through to the World Cup. Um, as I said, with all the bum-bum around, I was maybe feeling a bit with the Egyptians, but it was good that I checked afterwards, so I'm all right. I mean, uh, ahead of the game, I was definitely more for Senegal. For me, Egypt is a little bit of the Germany of uh, Africa. But on the other side, I got this beautiful jersey that I really would have loved to see at the World Cup too. But you know, that one is also very beautiful. So give or take in that sense. So uh, in that sense, I think Senegal is the best African team, the most talented one. I just want to see them for once play well. If it's a proper preparation, this is the one African team at the moment that I see that potentially could go for a quarterfinal. All the others... Not so much. I actually see, again, many group stage exits, unfortunately, for Africa. Um, let's talk about the game that no one talked about in Tunisia, Mali. Mali actually scored a goal, unfortunately, was offside. Mali playing in their old yellow jerseys. And why is white against yellow suddenly a thing that is beyond me? Uh, but okay. You could distinguish them, but white against yellow is not a proper color matchup to me. Uh, never looks good. Mali tried what they could, Tunisia also had the chance, but overall Tunisia qualified uh, then rather easily. Mali definitely has to rule that the one goal that decided the whole thing was such a freak on goal. I mean, both matches were poised for nil-nil in the penalty shootout. Honestly, it was just... Uh, this was the one that did, that did the disappointing one. And yeah, Tunisia is at the World Cup. I... I've been to Tunisia, I have nothing against Tunisia, but, you know, just because of the jerseys, I would have preferred Mali. Morocco against the DRC uh, was never a contest because Morocco just kicked the next gear. I would say Morocco is probably the second best team that has qualified for the World Cup. And they have also the star power to uh, back that. Uh, it was Uahi, uh, uh, Unahi, Unahi. Um, who scores uh, a, a brace and Tisudali won. Hakimi gets also on the score sheet. I think uh, Unahi, that game was played in Casablanca and he is from Casablanca. So uh, that, that, that was a big, uh, big thing. Uh, the big one though was that um, the goal by Malango uh, Nik uh, Nikita, who just came on 90 seconds later, make, uh, takes a great shot. Okay, when you make such a long video, you get interrupted by a phone call. I'm recording, of course, still on my phone. So, um, yeah, we'll continue. Uh, the last one in Africa was actually the big one in many, many ways. Uh, how to say? Uh, I think that Senegal, Egypt was probably the, the glamour tie. But I have to say, Algeria against Kakakamara, just a, for sheer drama, beat it all. And it never should have come that way, to be honest. Algeria did not get the job done. Absolutely not. And while, you know, another reason why I was maybe a little bit for Egypt was very selfish. Um, in the pre period, I didn't manage it. I thought, yeah, I could have then uh, the headline, another continental cho uh, champion failed to qual uh, qualify. But to, to, to be honest, it was fine. But here... This was literally like Italy. Algeria did not get the job done. And I'm saying this as a big Cameroon fan. Cameroon is my favorite team in Africa. I always have maintained that, although I now have some soft spots for um, uh, Burkina Faso and Mali as well, mostly for Georgia. Georgia is in it. I generally support all the African teams at the World Cup. But Cameroon it was always my first love. Let's put it that way. So uh, always, and I say this as a someone who wanted Cameron to win this one. But when I just look from an African perspective, there are chances that especially the one that Belaili missed at 1-0 for Cameron, a goal that came out of nowhere, where the goalkeeper crashes into a defender and Chupa Moting just takes care of it and makes it 1-0 one, uh, one for Cameron and 1-1 one, one on aggregate. And I thought, yeah, maybe there's something in it. I mean, Cameron is tat tat And uh, the one thing that I have to give Cameron Cracker for, they went now for a uh, Cameroonian coach with Rigo Song. I have no idea of what uh, Rigo Song, whether he will be a good or bad appointment. But with him qualifying, I think this will put at least a big boost up, up there. Because I think the next level should be that um, African teams 
are coached by African coaches who maybe uh, came from Europe. So, so that everything spreads because I think that will give the whole continent a whole different level of um, confidence and will form a truly African game then as well. So that moment, that has to be, they have to have said, there's a lot of good things going for Cameron and me liking Cap Cameron anyway. Um, so that one nil, it made me happy. But when I saw the chance that Belaili missed, after Islam Slimani, I think, um, assisted him. The writing was on the wall for Algeria. They scored two more goals, both of them rightfully called off. Islam Slimani um, standing offside. And then in uh, overtime, uh, clearly his header that went into the goal, it clearly hit the hand. So rightfully chalked off. But they had other chances as well. Algeria should never have gone to overtime. A 1-1 one, one was easily in there, if not a, a straight-out win. However, it was not to happen. Then they go to overtime, as I said, they score another goal that is chalked off. Uh, <laughs> they must have been desperate. They kept on grinding, grinding, grinding. I mean, Cam Cameron had one great chance, I think, in the second half. They had one great chance where they could have uh, killed Tilda as well. I mean, this has, has to be said. Cameron should, could have, could have, should have made it to this. So both teams had really big chances. But overall, Algeria dominated the game. Tuba in the 118th minute makes it 1 1. At that point, you think Algeria is going to the World Cup. And I think that this Algeria team, maybe not as talented as the um, uh, Senegal team, but has been long together. They are a unit that just have hit a rough patch at the wrong time. Speaking the AFCON and now in qualifying. But that team, I think there's a loads of talent there. It's one of those that actually, I think. Not quarterfinal, but survive group stage if the draw is right is in there for this Algeria team. However, it came as it <laughs> it came. I mean, this was the most epic finish ever. It was a last ditch free kick in the 124th minute that somehow Tokwe Kambi gets his uh, full foot on and makes it 2 1 for Cameroon and sends Cameroon to, to, to the World Cup. Now, every World Cup is better with Cameroon. I personally think. However, for the overall picture of the African teams, I think a Algeria qualifying would have been important. That's how I feel. It's going back, 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 back and forth. I, I'm very Cameroon. I'm very happy that Cameroon has qualified. But I do feel a little bit for Algeria. I, I gotta be that honest. But so, so, so be it. The African qualifiers, as I said, delivered on every occasion every little bit this was the action this was absolutely the action forget the first legs the second legs uh everything that is good about the game is bad and is ugly about the game i mean we really had the good with this late minute drama we had the ugly with uh, uh, with the, the bad uh with all the own goals we had uh, the lasers the you know and then with the ugly with the scenes in abuja so uh absolutely absolutely amazing uh, going over to South America, Peru gets the job done against Paraguay. That's the most important. Labatula La and Yotun, 2 nil, all good. All good and very happy to uh, be able to say that uh, these two teams, um, that uh, Peru makes it to, gets at least the fifth spot and makes it now to the playoffs where they are current, currently. Uh, you know, we know that Australia is 62% favorite, uh, so at the Emirates 38, 88%. So uh, it ever averages up at the moment, Peru is a favorite, 60%. It will be a little bit tighter when they play Australia. Uh, it would be a much bigger favorite if they play UAE. But Peru, our favorites, is a game that will be a one, uh, one match in Doha, of course. So very happy with that. That that one. Other results: we have Uruguay beating Chile, so Chile never had really a chance. Uh, Colombia beat Venezuela, but it was a little bit uh, too little, too late. Ecuador, Argentina won one, and bro, uh, Brazil Brazil beating Bolivia four 0 So those are those. Uh, then another kind of a stunning result yesterday evening: uh, New Zealand beats all the Solomon Islands five 0 I mean that New Zealand is the best team there. Okay, but the tournament had been overall rather tightish, I gotta say. And then suddenly in that final, it is a 5 0 the destruction. I mean, you only beat Tahiti 1 0, but we have New Zealand moving on 
into the Intercontinental Playoff, where they will face Costa Rica. And we'll talk about those because CONCACAF qualifying finished yesterday. Mexico gets the job done against El Salvador. Again, it was not a glorious campaign for Mexico. It was a loads of hiccups along, along the way, but largely get the job done. It's all about qualifying. And they got the job done in the first half. Antuna and Jimenez, 2-0 job done, as I said. Uh, Canada actually lost uh, away from home to Panama, which didn't matter at all anymore. They were qualified, pa Panama were through. And then it was Costa Rica and the U.S. I mean, uh, with Mexico winning, Costa Rica needed to win by six against the U.S. The U.S. avoid uh, being blown out. However, um, they still cannot win in San Jose or in, uh, at Costa Rica. It, it, it's just staggering in that sense. I think it was the first time that they were uh, tied at halftime. Um, it may have been a little bit shaky, 51st and 59th, uh, Vargas and Contreras make it 2-0 for Costa Rica, but then the US hold on. It was not a glorious qualification, but the ghosts from 2017 have been officially banished. Uh, I think it was uh, rather weird in the way that, you know, do you could, do you celebrate, do you not celebrate because you charge us a lot, but then you qualified for a World Cup. I think you are allowed to celebrate and we have the US at next year's, uh, at next year's, this year's World Cup. Feels like yeah after 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 some there there's a lot of semantic errors happening um, with uh, <laughs> uh, with um, people saying yeah uh, in the summer no it's not in summer it's in winter and it's not next year's World Cup so yeah many weird weird, weird things there but yes they are there as well together with Mexico Canada and let's say Costa Rica play in New Zealand where they are 64% favorite at this very moment uh, which seems reasonable uh, so yeah um, I on a personal note now knowing almost all the qualified teams I probably will have to buy I, um, if I want to get all all the teams I think I have to buy three jerseys left Saudi Arabia uh, for sure then the win of Costa Rica against New Zealand as far as I know and then yeah uh, Costa Rica New Zealand and I think that's that is it really only those two Saudi Arabia Japan uh, yep looking good looking really good overall I, I feel I'm missing one I think there was a third one but I think of all African there well that's it so Costa Rica or New Zealand I need to get Saudi Arabia um, and you know if the UAE should uh, qualify or qualify then we'll have, have to get them as well so looking rather good maybe I should look forward now to complete that collection as quickly and not focus on so much on club shirts this video is very very long but there was so much happening that I think deserved all the attention there. In any case, uh, please let me know what you thought about the qualifiers. I will do another video in the evening um, with my first World Cup prediction, uh, which will be rather interesting, I think, uh, because we don't know the final field, but it will be there. Uh, I will give you also kind of where I see some uh, disbalances in the draw that certain teams will play more likely against others. We'll talk all about this. But that is this evening's vi video, which I probably... I will record this evening, but I may publish it in the morning. Let's see how it will work out. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!